Welcome to Bath, Fizz, and Foam. My name is Robin French-Smith, and today we're gonna use the Inedible Soaps teapot mold to make some bath bombs. Now, I have had this video prepped and ready for <laughs> a good hot minute. Um, why have I not uploaded it? Why has it been three months since I've uploaded anything? I don't know. I think like the ADHD monster got me. I had this video uploaded and queued up and ready to go. I just didn't record the audio for it. And then like I just stalled out. Like I had a bunch of other videos uh, that needed to be edited. And I don't know. I just <laughs> like could not move forward. So I apologize for that. But I'm here. We're going to move forward. And I am going to tell you how to use this cool mold. So, like I said, this mold is from Inedible Soaps. It is a bottomless mold. I do have a couple bottomless molds that I hope to be able to show y'all over the next couple weeks. Uh, but this is a bottomless mold. And it's not completely bottomless, but um, you can unmold it upright. And because it doesn't have a bottom, it has a flat uh, bottom. It doesn't have like a normal seam like bath bombs have and you're un, uh, able to unmold it standing upright. So there I am taking the flat back piece off. I'm gonna push the bath bomb and the press piece up through the shell of the mold, shake off any excess. Tell me that doesn't look like an elephant wearing a hat. It does. Okay, so I just showed you uh, where it does not have the bottom on it, and so that means that you're able to unmold it like that, standing straight up, and just pull that piece away. And what you're left with is, don't do that. Oh my God, don't pick up bath bombs right after you've made them, but I'm picking it up to show you that you're, you have a bath bomb that has a rounded side on one side and the back side is flat. So that's kind of one of the perks with a bottomless mold. You're able to unmold the bath bomb and it can stand upright. I don't know if you've ever used a bath bomb that has a seam on the bottom, but like sometimes it can be difficult to work with because like things like a rocket or other things that need to stand up can be a little bit difficult because of that bottom seam. So bottomless molds eliminate that. So I put the flat back piece in um, and then I lightly filled the shell and the mold up with a little bit of mix. And then I'm putting in bath bomb embeds. If you don't know what embeds are or you don't know how to make embeds, I will um, link a video to that because we have an embed video. Um, and then I fill the rest of the mold up really lightly and loosely with this mix and I'm leaving kind of a middle part that has like a mounded up part in the middle and I'm brushing off the sides where the handle and the spout is of this mold and I'll show you, I changed the view in a minute so you can see the kind of like the side angle. I'm just tapping it there to get the excess mix off and it helps me make less of a mess. I'm not completely mess free, but it does help me to make less of a mess. When you're pressing the molds uh, with, I'm using the palm of my hand first off and I'm also pressing the edges of the mold. I'm not like really pressing in the center of it uh, because I mean that helps, but it's really the edges that you need to be concerned about. You're always gonna tap. Always have to tap with a 3D printed mold or pretty much any bath bomb mold. You need to tap it. Moving that flat back piece, pressing this piece through, up and through. You can, I mean, I think technically, you know, you could just flip this over and you could unmold it flat on its back. I don't I mean you could do that, but like, why do that when you can do it like this? So if the mold ever sticks, like, oh, it's stuck. Oh no, okay, just gently tap it. Never wanna force the mold off because you will definitely break your bath bombs if you do that. So I'm gonna gently move that guy up and out of the way. And we'll make one more with this POV point of view. We'll make one more bath bomb like this and then I'll switch the angle so you can see a different angle. And I'm just fiddling with things right now, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Okay, pick up, yep, do that. Okay, so. <laughs> put the flat back piece into the shell. And then, like I said, I'm going to be 
just kind of loosely filling my mix in. Now this bath bomb mix, I know, especially towards the end, you're gonna see that it looks pretty dry and that is one of the comments that people will make a lot. It's like, oh no, your mix looks dry. Um, this is the high humidity recipe that we sell on our website and it does look dry. It does look dry. Um, it does have just a few sprays of binder in it though and this recipe also includes a liquid surfactant. So even though the mix looks dry, um, it's actually perfect and it works really well. It helps it stay light and fluffy and it um, dries nice and hard. It does take about three days, I feel, to fully dry, um, but it still works great for humidity. And the, the key thing is that you're not having to constantly add binder. So um, it's just one of the things like in humidity, you have to be so careful with adding moisture and binder. So just adding it at the beginning of the mix really, uh, at the beginning of the process really helps a lot. And then not having to add it later. All right, so here we go, pressing, pressing. And we're gonna unmold this top piece again. There's, you're just always gonna tap. <laughs> like, I don't think I can stress that enough. You have to tap on the mold. Uh, it's one of the things that like, I think people just really don't understand that um, when they first get 3D printed molds, they think they're just gonna be able to just pull them apart. And that's just doesn't work like that. Um, maybe some people can do that. I don't know, but not me, not me. Okay, I didn't weigh this guy. I weighed the other two, and this guy is like, she thick. She is much thicker. And there's a nice view of my elbow, so you can't see anything that I'm doing. You're welcome for that. Here we go, we have changed the angle now. And look, I'm actually showing you the mold this time. I'm showing that it's got a little bottomless section, and we got this flat back piece. Let's snap that into the shell. And look at that dry ass mix. I mean, it's really not dry though. Like I know that it looks dry, but this is primo prab mix for me in my opinion. Um, I like to add like a real thin section to the bottom when I'm adding embeds because that means that they will be able to come through the bath bomb quicker. Um, I used to do them thicker and add the embeds like really thick in like almost the exact middle. But then I found that it took a long time for the embeds to show up in the water, which is not like ideal. So um, now I do like a thinner mix. And as I'm adding the mix into the mold, I'm kind of like shaking it, jostling it around a little bit just to help kind of allow the mix to settle a little bit. There I am scraping off the handle and the spout. And look, I'm gonna show you. See how mounded up it is? This is a really loose, fluffy mix. So I pile it up like that because when I press it in um, it's going to compact a lot but it leaves little kind of air pockets I guess inside there which helps the mix float. You can poke holes in the bath bomb mix if you really really care about floating. Most of the time I don't have too many problems with floating but I also like don't focus on it a lot. I mean I don't know some some makers like really really care about whether or not their bath bombs float. I don't really care that much because I think it's just kind of, a, <laughs> it's just kind of one of those things. Like you can do everything possible and then sometimes they still sink. So I just, I don't, I just don't put too much effort into it. I feel like if I have a light mix, it usually floats and you know, sometimes it's just how it is. And I'll stop being so existential right now. <laughs> All right, so I don't know why this angle is like so hard for me to get. I wanted to be able to show you like I'm tapping it and I'm holding the shell. Um, come on, Robin, tap it. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. I'm gonna turn it to the side so you guys can see what a cutie that is. So like I said, this mold is from Inedible Soaps. I also have a teacup mold that I got, but I got it after I did this video. So unfortunately I didn't make the video of that one yet, but I will because he's cute. Um, but yeah, so this is just a really cute mold. It's really easy to use and it looks really neat. You can kind of do a lot of things with it. I mean, I obviously did mine white and then I had the pink and green embeds inside and I painted little roses on the surface of it. So believe it or not, I did these for Mother's Day. What month are we in right now? August? Yeah. 
I did these for Mother's Day and I'm just now getting around to doing the audio for the video. And like I said, I apologize. I don't know. Just life got like real. Ugh. It got real like out of control for me for a minute there. By which I mean like literally nothing happened. <laughs> I just really like, couldn't. I just couldn't for a while. All right. There you go. Uh, scraping the sides off. And I know that that middle part like looks so mounded up, right? Um, that's because there's that bowl area on the bath bomb mold and then you just press it into place uh, but once you like press it it's cool it all smashes down into the right areas and I think you can see when I'm molding like it still is a little bit sideways so you know if you have molds that are like that um, like I have a um, I have a couple different ones that are like that where it's like one of the pieces kind of goes down is like thinner the rocket the cater rocket mold is like that where it ha the fins are a little bit thinner uh, you can just like scrape that area out of the way so that it doesn't overpack it that's one of the problems i think people probably have when uh, that those areas kind of break too easily i think and then here i am struggling with how to show you me unmolding this and uh tapping at the same time there we go ta-da isn't that fantastic? Don't you love it? Um, I'm going to do this a couple more times, but I'm going to fast forward because, I mean, you've seen me do it five times. Do you want to see me do it more? I mean, it's cool. You can certainly watch me do it more. I was just like, I don't know. I think we're, are we over it? Are we done with this? We're done with it, right? Um, but yeah, like I said, I will include uh, the link for where I got the mold. Um, I'll include... A link to show you about embeds if you're interested in learning about doing embeds and um, yeah not really much else to talk about except like oh I you know what I was gonna say I was gonna say I'm sorry I haven't made video I think I might have already said that this is my my childhood trauma and guilt coming out right now it's like oh my god I feel too responsible for everything um but anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna I promise you I'm gonna uh, start updating uh with more videos more um what's the word I'm looking for reliably consistently um I do have other videos queued up and I have some really fun ones coming up because we're going into Halloween and I have some really cool like I have a brain that I want to show you guys. Uh, I have the Kata Skull, which is like a highly requested one. So that one's coming up as well. So I do have those coming up. I have the apple mold. The apple. I have a video of doing apples. Um, which is kind of boring to me. But, you know, some people like apples. I'm not going to... I'm not going to judge you if you're an apple person. And that's it. Voila. Here is how... That, there, there it is. Cute. Huh? Here's how I painted it. Painted a little rose on it. And sent them off to go live with people for Mother's Day. Huzzah! Um, make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see when I make more videos and post them. Because, you know, you want to see that, right? And be sure to join our Facebook group, Bath, Fizz and Foam, Bath Bomb and Bubble Spa Support Group. Because we want to see you there. Because we like people. We want to see your sweet, beautiful mug. And as always, my friends, happy making. <laughs>